Hello, welcome to part four of the PT331 SEC Air Operator Training. In this section, we're going to be going over programming and job setup using the touchscreen. So once I have my machine turned on and using the e-stop, making sure that's disengaged and turning the machine on using the switch underneath the feeder, it brings me up to my main touchscreen, and this is going to be my home screen. It gives me a sheet count, crease count, cut count, which you'll want to keep in mind if you start to get higher up into the 500 million cut range. Uh, if you notice that your cuts aren't clean, it could be because uh, the machine or the blades inside the machine are actually getting a little bit dull and it's time for them to be replaced. You'll also see a serial number here. Uh, we do not want that serial number if you're calling into Graphic Wizard or if you're calling in for service. We're going to be asking for the one that's underneath the feeding plate, which we will tell you, um, but just something to keep in mind. The touchscreen on this machine is pressure sensitive, uh, not like your phone, like what you'd see on an old airplane. So if you're using the pad of your finger, it's going to be a lot less responsive than using the tip of my finger, like my fingernail, or using a stylus. On this main screen, if I notice that the machine isn't responsive as it used to be, if I press three different times, it will come up with my touch panel calibration. And I simply press on those red dots on the screen, and it's going to calibrate it screen for me again All right so remember don't use the pad of your finger use the point and it's going to be nice and responsive for you it'll be a lot easier to program jobs and be a lot smoother uh, this is going to be my main screen so i have settings a place to drop my table down run which will bring me back to my main run screen when we're running jobs which we're going to go over after we've done some programming and then I have my templates. So these are jobs that come stored inside the machine, right? Some standard jobs that you would actually run, two by three and a half inch business cards, three and a half inch by five, um, you know, ticket jobs, greeting cards, just standard jobs that we run on 12 by 18 sheets. Uh, the open button, which is for the jobs that we have programmed in the machine already, business cards, sorry, open. Uh, business cards, greeting cards, tickets. And so these are the jobs that you're going to have recurring. We'll give them a job memory so that you don't have to program every single time. And then we have our smart input, which is our job creation and the edit screen, which is where you can make manual adjustments to any job that you have open um, or where you can program a job from scratch um, if you want to spend a lot more time doing it. And so if I go into my edit screen, it will give me every single value and I can select an icon and change the value out of that, save it into the machine but I'm going to have to go through and program each cut individually. So it is a time consuming process, um, but you can use this to make adjustments and then resave your job or to create one from scratch and then go in and run that job um, for a live product. One that we're going to use more often is the smart input. So it's going to give me a couple of different screens to follow through. And in this case, we're going to program a 12 by 18, 24 up business card job. Okay, so the paper size, in this case, I'm using 12 by 18. So I'm going to select my digital button in the bottom, which is my 12 by 18. I've got 8.5 by 11, 8.5 uh, by 14, 11 by 17, and my digital 12 by 18 sheet. Or if you press on any of the icons here and type in your number, it will put it in there for you. And then I have my register mark location. Uh, again, refer to the manual. This is for my job setup. Um, but my register mark compensating for any digital image shift front to back. So if my image moves, bounces when it's printing, by putting the register mark location on, I am ensuring that the machine's going to read each sheet and cut accurately. All you're going to do is measure from the lead edge of your sheet to this mark location. I know in my case that this mark is at a quarter inch from the front, so I would just put in 0 0.25, but you're going to measure this very accurately. If I don't put in the accurate number, garbage in, garbage out. If I tell it it's at 0.3 and it's at 0.25, it's going to be shifting all of my cuts up, thinking it's doing a good job and compensating for me when it isn't. Okay, so 12 by 18 sheet size with my register mark. You don't have to use this and you can turn it off and on uh, when you're selecting your jobs. Uh, but we do recommend it for any job that has fine registration. My card size is the size of my finished piece. Okay, so it's giving me little picture here that would be my 12 by 18 sheet the length is the length of my card going down the sheet this way the width width of my card going that way okay so in a case of a business card two by three and a half or if i wanted to do a um, greeting card let's say eight and a half long five and a half wide 
right? If I want to use the template inside the machine, eight and a half, five and a half greeting card. Uh, in this case, we're just going to do our business cards the first time through. So we're just going to go two and three and a half. And as you notice, as my hand was covering it, there are some presets in the bottom to kind of speed you up a little bit for the common jobs we're running on these machines. Uh, next, the machine wants to know the distance from the lead edge of my sheet to my first trim mark. Right, so inside the bleed where you want your first cut to be, in this case, it's a half inch. And then my gutter cut, which is the, diff uh, the distance in between my two cards right, of my bleed. And in this case, I'm at 0 0.2 inches. Uh, all right, machine just gave me a warning here. So it's a learning lesson for everybody. Um, that sheet uh, in the manual, page number three, gives me my maximums and minimum distances. So the machine will change, uh, or the machine will tell you if you set up a job that's outside of the normal machine parameters. Okay, so I put in a half inch, which was actually my distance from the side in. Uh, my lead edge is a little bit shorter, so my lead trim. The machine was just telling me, hey, there's a scrap that's too small on the back end of the machine, or the gutter's too big, or there's too much front trim. And the machine will give you a notification, uh, which is why it's important to base my jobs one, inputs, input your uh, dimensions properly, uh, but two, to when I'm setting up my files to make sure that I set up those jobs, you know, based on the manual and based on the specifications of the machine so that I'm not trying to program something that the machine simply cannot do, All right? So you can see now that I've corrected that to my 0.4 inch lead trim, not my half inch, uh, the machine is accepting that value. Um, then screen number four, if I'm doing any additional you know, creasing perforating, which in this case I'm not going to, but I would program those in here. All right, so it's giving me four slots where I can crease on a business card. We're not gonna do that, uh, but it also gives me half fold, tri fold, open gate, close gate, double parallel, uh, engineer fold, and a Z fold. So it gives me seven different presets here that I can use when you are gonna do folding, right? If you're doing greeting cards or if you're doing brochures and things like that, you can use the presets or you can select the value up at the top and say, I want it to crease right in the middle, right? In this case, we will not do that. So after I've done that, the machine will give me a preview, showing me my lead trim, showing me all the gutters. So if something looks you know, glaringly obviously wrong, then I can just press back and we can change our values. If it looks okay, then we'll press okay. Now for the most part, once I've done this step, I'm just gonna press test, the table will raise, and it will send in my sheet and begin cutting. Now you can see on the out feed here, I've done a poor job at setting up my card catchers. So these magnetic guides will move side to side. Once you get them into the position that you like, Simply tape them down. See my middle row dropped in nice and easily, um, but these outsides, I was just a little bit off in terms of my setup here. So I'll take my cards out, I'm ready to go. So a really, really fast and easy business card setup, move you back and I'll show you how we would make any compensations if that job does not look the way we want it to. And I'm sorry for, for giving you such a harsh move around the machine here. Follow this just one more second. Get you lined up so you can see my screen properly. Okay, that will do. So I've programmed my business cards. They come with the back end. Now there's things that I can do to this job if I want to make any compensations. Uh, so I can change my speed on my main run screen. I can set a sheet counter. So if I know I want to send somebody 250 business cards, that would be 11 sheets. And if we're up, if I put in my sheet counter, it will run 11 sheets and then the machine will stop. And then I have a batch counter, which will mean the machine runs 11 sheets, pauses, and then it will run 11 more sheets. Okay, so for the most part, you'll use the sheet counter if you want to keep things bundled in a certain amount. Um, the batch counter you can use, but oftentimes our users will just go to the back end of the machine, collect the product that they just ran, and then once they've done that, um, they'll just press start again. Okay. So instead of 
turning on a batch counter and it's starting up automatically while you're not paying attention, um, just go back, press the run button again, and we'll restart again. Uh, here's my registration mark, so I can turn it on and off. The machine while the job's running. I have a check function. Uh, what this one's gonna do is bring my sheets just inside of the machine so that I can align my blades left to right. And so if you're gonna try to set something up based on cut lines um, or in the image on your sheet, I can press the check button and it will bring it in there and give me a chance to align. Now it gives me a forward and reverse button. I'll show you here. Okay, so the machine has brought in my sheet just to the start. And then I can see my forward and reverse arrows. So what I would do is press forward and move the sheet inside the machine. And then if I press reverse again, you'll be able to see on my sheet here, you can see where your cutting blades are aligned. Okay, so just move in and out and it will give you an indication of where your lines are, how much over you need to move. You can see I'm not totally centered here. So I would just use my external adjustment and shift my blades over a little bit. I can do that from the outside of the machine. Okay, so that's my check function just to help you align products. Um, if something does look a little bit off, it's a really, really good way to just double check and make sure you're in the right position. And then I have my down button, which will drop my table again. If you need to reload halfway through a job, the test button will run one sheet. And then I have the run button, which will run all of the sheets that are in the feeder or however many I have programmed into my sheet counter here. Okay, so for my main run screen, once things are programmed, I'm just pressing run, test, and play. Hopefully that makes sense so far. I know it's a lot to take in, so we're just gonna go through. I'm gonna program that same job again really, really quickly, and then I'll show you how to save it and how to make compensations through the touch screen as well. Okay, so that was smart input, digital sheet size, enter, enter. My registration mark was at 0 0.25 inches, enter again. My card length and width are two by three and a half, so that's already good. My lead trim in this case was 0 0.4 inches. Again, you're measuring to make sure everything's accurate. This one's 0 0.2 inches. I know that these are in the right spot, so I can just put those in. And then I have my crease line. If I wanna make any changes there, I do not. There's my job and I'm ready to run. All right, so a simple process. These are all things that you should know. Um, use a digital caliper or a ruler. Um, digital calipers, get them $20 online and it will do a much more accurate job than trying to convert from a ruler. And then I can change my speed and do all my other things here to run that job. Now, once I've run that job, if I press the back button, so the second from the top on the left-hand side, it brings back that same screen, right? The one that we saw from the edit where I can make individual adjustments to different things in my job. So I can go through and I can change my register mark location or my sheet size. I can move where my cuts are going to be if I wanna shift things forwards and backwards. And then I can save this job or I could delete it if it is a saved job and I no longer want it. So let's press save, we'll call it test. And then the next time that I wanna run this job, I just go to my open instead of my smart input, right? I don't have to put it in again. I'll just open this one up. Uh, this is in alphabetical, alphanumeric order. So numbers first, and then just by the starting letter, and I can recall those jobs. All right, so once you get a lot of them in there, it's gonna be relatively easy to find. Just use something that's gonna remind you of that job, if it's a specific customer, uh, or you just use standard two by three and a half business cards, or three and a half by eight uh, tent cards, tickets, whatever it may be, um, so that you can use those same templates over and over again. Once I have done this, uh, if I wanna make any changes to my job, I have a couple of really quick presets here. So anything side to side inside the machine, I'm gonna be using my blades. So I'm gonna change those myself. But front to back, I can press this bottom icon, forwards or backwards, and move all of my cuts, all of my creases, whatever's programmed into the job, forwards and backwards. And then I can use this top one to shrink or stretch my cards. And so what I mean by that is that when I press these bottom ones, you can see that it's moving the whole job forwards or backwards. When I'm pressing this one, my starting cut doesn't change, but as I go down the machine, it starts to cut more and more out of my job. If I go the other way, in between my sheets or in between my gutters, it starts to take out less. 
And so this is a way to compensate. If you have a stock that's slipping or if you have an image that is uh, shrunk or stretched on a digital machine, I can actually make my cuts a little bit larger, a little bit smaller on the way through. So when I get a finished business card out of the back end, if I think it looks great, right, from front to back, side to side, then I don't do anything. If side to side, so this is my slitting blade, my sheet goes through the machine like this. If this is off, then I'm going to use my external shift over here, right, to move my blades into the position so that left to right it's aligned properly. Let's move you back. Better. If front to back, all of the cards look really good, but they're all a little bit off, they're all too high or they're all too low, that's when we would use this bottom shift to move all of my cuts forwards or backwards on the sheet to align so that all of the cards come out looking centered where they should be. Now, the last one would be if my initial card looks really, really good, but as I go down the machine, my image starts to slip. Right? So if you take your first card and your last card and you notice on the last one, well, this green line's a little bit lower. Right? So it's been slipping as it goes through the machine. If it's a little bit lower on the last one, then if I make my cuts a little bit smaller right, using my top adjustment here, it's going to make my gutters a little bit smaller, which would cut a little bit earlier. And ultimately, it would give me more blue space on my last card to align my image. Okay, And if it's in reverse, then I want to cut a little bit more on each one and I go the other way. So this is a way to compensate if your first card looks really good. And then as I go down the sheet, they get worse. Um, they go a little bit too high or a little bit too low. Then I have this secondary compensation to compensate for those types of things. Um, this is something that will happen more if your machine is not clean as well. All right, so first step would be to clean. Um, and then the second step would be to make a really, really simple compensation to make sure that your job aligns properly. Now that we've done that, we're done. So we've gone through programming a new job. We know how to save it into the touchscreen. And then we know how to shift our blade side to side and we know how to move things forwards and backwards as well. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, please reach out to your local installing dealer uh, or graphic wizard at 1-800-265-3376. Uh, thank you very much for being a graphic wizard customer and we hope you enjoy the machine. If we can ever help, and then please feel free to reach out. Thank you very much.